it's kind of the theme song of people like you and me. We're kind of hard asses guys. I like gold and silver. You know, I don't trust my government that much. And I don't save money. I save gold and silver because it's liquid. In other words, if I need cash, I just come out of silver or gold fast and I'm into cash. And I was talking to Rick about why do people hang on to cash when I think, was it you that said they're guaranteed their inflation is at 7% and they're paying you 3% or something. Why would you hang on to it? I, I remember, Rick, um, Doug, when I was about 25 years old, silver was $50 an ounce. Today it's 35 an ounce or approximately for a coin. And I'm oh. going, why don't you buy more of it? You know, people go, now I'd rather have the US dollar. I'm going, holy mackerel. See, my opinion on the speculation side, I think silver is most, and by the way, we're not an investment company. Well, rec- Richard doesn't make recommendations. But right now I'm looking at silver and my teeth are getting soft, going, holy mackerel, what an opportunity. But people would rather hang on to the dollar. Right, and I said, uh, you know, I have friends with millions in cash and they don't need the cash. I said, why don't you put some of it into silver and gold coins? Yeah. You know, they'll, they'll put them in long-term treasuries. I go, are you nuts? Well, it's, it's going to be a tremendous transfer of wealth in the next few years. I think from the people that are doing what we recommend, uh, capital comes to us and it's going to, co- and it's going to uh, leave people that are doing conventional things. We live in unconventional times. So no, uh, I, I, I completely agree with you. And I guess both of us uh, speculate in small mining stocks uh which most people don't even know exist and aren't aren't something for most people because they're so volatile and it's such a specialist area and it takes it takes a lot of um specialized knowledge for them but uh that's a leverage way to play gold and silver yeah so you know like <clears throat> when i was younger when we were all younger there was uh, was it james brown the uh singer he was called the godfather of soul I yeah. sometimes refer to you and uh, Rick Rule as the godfather of gold. Because <laughs> I look to you for not so much why to buy gold and silver, but you guys are macro guys. I mean, you're watching, you are traveling the world constantly. You see what's going on. And I talk to most people, you know, they, they were born in Scottsdale and they'll die in Scottsdale. That's all they ever see. Last summer, I spent the seven weeks training T teaching at Barrett Honors Program at Arizona State University. So I brought all my entrepreneurial friends. I brought my oil guy in, my water guys. I brought my uh, cattle guys in. They're the real, we, we invest in commodities. So I brought my real capitalists in there to teach them about how we trade something outside of paper. And my, my, my I'm so hardcore, I'm so, if you can print it, I don't want it. You know, that's how hardcore I am. So the students were ecstatic. 37 professors came after me. That's fantastic, Robert. The fight still goes, it's almost a year. They're still attacking. They're Marxists. I mean, they're hardcore Marxists. So that's what the, but I'm gonna get back. The reason I wanna, we can talk about gold, silver and all this stuff and CBDC. But I like your philosophy because the school I went to, I went to school for a whole year traveling the world and on merchant ships. And you, it's, you can't come home, if that makes sense to you. you know, oh, I came home, it, it, I came home with my high school friends and they're still high school friends, smoking pot, drinking, chasing girls, yeah. surfing. Yeah. And they don't grow up. With one of the quick war stories, my, one of my first stops was in Vietnam, 19 years old on a bomb carrier, victory ship, carrying 500, 750 and 1,000 pound bombs to Cameron Bay. And I'm, I'm walking around. This guy says, you want to meet a Viet Cong? <laughs> what? <laughs> so did, I, you? I, did, he, did he introduce you? He and I sat down, had a beer. <laughs> it was a lot better than talking to my professor. <laughs> and he explained to me what they were fighting for. Do, do you know what I mean, Doug? That was priceless. Priceless. And he was just as committed as I was. And then three years later, I came back as a Marine gunship pilot in helicopters. I was going to fight him. Yeah. But, you know, that's real life. And that's, those are, uh, 
When I heard you say you would, if you were 25, you'd go back to Africa, I, that's kind of what I wanted to talk about because a lot of our audience are young men right now, probably under 50. And they're kind of wondering what's happening to their life and they should they invest in crypto or S&P or go to school, whatever it is. But there's a whole world out there, Doug, and it's one of the most exciting times in world history. I mean, would you agree with that? Once I got off my ship and I, I used to fly for the Marine Corps, once I shut the things down, I was out. I said, I'm going to get out of here. <laughs> but um, you know, that's what that's what records is talking about is, is supply chain. You know, what I mean, it's it's everything yeah. today. I think also you're saying the same 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 I talk about is chaos is opportunity. Do you know yes. what I mean? And we're going to a very chaotic time right now, but you got to be smarter. Yeah. You know, a lot of people are talking about Russia, you know, Brazil, Russia, India, China, South Africa, possibly Mexico, China, Japan. What What are your thoughts on the BRICS nation and going on the gold standard? Uh, the U.S. really shot itself in the foot uh, by confiscating the assets of uh, the Russia, of Russia, the government, and 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 Russian people. Uh, it, it's they told the world that if you have money in the U.S. dollar, U.S. banks, uh, it can be taken away from you if we decide we don't like you. So uh, that was the bell ringing to get out of the water and get out of the U.S. dollar, and the. Uh, Russians and the Indians and the Iranians and the Chinese and everybody. Uh, they don't like to have to deal in, don't like us. Uh, in the U.S. dollar. They'd rather. I think what they're going to do is they're going to go back to gold. They're going to come up yeah. with they're gonna, because they don't trust each other's currencies any more than right. they trust the U.S. dollar. Right. So I think we're going to see gold once again used as the international numeraire. And I think it's going to be at considerably higher levels than it is today. Right. And so that's why I started with this, the song, you know, you, on the eve of destruction. It's also the time for the biggest opportunities in world history. 